What is up ladies and gentlemen, Manny here, welcome back to another detailed root analysis. Today we're gonna take a look at Popo, an 8A of the La Maison de Chevre sector in Leonidio, Greece. Really cool root, I have to say. It's about 20 meters long and therefore a good bit shorter than the last one we checked out, which was around 30 meters long and therefore quite an endurance route right today's route is rather of a, a power endurance character i would say with quite a definite boulder crux as we're gonna see the first third of the route is rather banter it's characterized with you know too fast and lots of big white spots indicating that there is gonna be a lot of reset points uh, what do i mean with a reset point well you do two, three harder moves and then you all of a sudden get a good hold again, which allows you to shake your hands off a bit and almost shake back to zero, right? So these reset points, uh, if I hit them in the first third of the route, I speed up a bit so that we don't get too boring here. Um, as you can see, this is my on-site attempt. First uh, go on the route, as you can see I have also three quick draws on my harness. The reason for that is that apart from three quick draws, apart from three bolts, which I could, which I could see from the ground, um, everything was uh, already in the route, all the gear was already placed, so the quick draws have been placed not by myself, but probably by someone else who also tried the route. Um, so I thought, yeah, well, I gotta only take three quick draws with me, right, in case I want to clip these three bolts, which, as it should turn out, is actually unnecessary. Um, but anyway, you cannot know that uh, if you haven't been on the route once, right? So we're still in the first third of the route. We're kind of shaking our way up there, trying to lose as little energy as possible. Um, as I said, the route is quite too far E in its character, especially in the first third of the route. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're just passing the this wet tufa there, which required me to have a little bit of an additional chalk up afterwards because my fingers were a little bit wet. No problem though, really, for climbing the route. And now we're speeding up a bit because um, it gets a bit more um, thin, so to say. Here, really nice right heel hook there to get this quick join was really happy to find this one because it makes the clip a lot easier and a lot safer. And now the route becomes quite underclingy. Uh, we get the first undercling side pull uh, tufa there. Tufa, is it really a tufa? Um, we're leaning out quite a lot here, getting another shake out in for the left hand and again shake out for the right hand. This is another one of these reset spots, right, where all of a sudden you get a quite good hand hold and pretty good foot holds as well. So we're leaning out and with leaning out it's always a double-edged edged sword because <laughs> if you're leaning out you can read a lot better, you can read the upcoming sequence a lot better but you also get a quite significantly more weight into your fingers right if you're leaning out. So we're placing the next quick draw there which is relatively unnecessary I would say because the um, next bolt was actually geared in such way that a couple of quick draws were attached to each other to form a chain. Obviously, the person that tried the route before me wanted to have this click, this this clip available quite soon, right? So, um, yeah, resetting the hands one one more time. You know, that's always another strategy to go for, right? If you can clip a quick draw and a be able gonna be able to return one more time to re to your reset spot to shake back to zero or to almost zero well, it's obviously not a bad idea to do that right so here i'm stopping because we're leaning out one last time to read the crux obviously this is gonna be the crux here because it's all of a sudden quite blank compared to the wall before and what I'm essentially seeing is here this uh, small little side pull up there and then there's another big big um, white spot very high up there on the right, right? So I already, I already saw that this is going to be a side pull for the left hand up there and we will need some 
some footholds there to make this one holdable because we're still quite stretched out. Probably we're gonna reach this side pull from an undercling and we're still quite stretched out with the feet because the last good footholds are quite down below, right? Let's see how I try to solve this problem, essentially. Right hand undercling, as you can see, uh, left foot higher, reaching up to the side pull. And here I'm realizing, okay, that's gonna be a bad one, damn looking down to find my footholds to make this one holdable as quickly as possible. So first thing is first right foot, then left foot. I'm figuring, ah, this is not good enough. It's not good enough to make it statically. Still not good enough to make it statically. Anyway, we're gonna go for it. And here I'm unfortunately hitting this right hand hold not perfectly. I don't know if you can see it in slow-mo, but I actually over gripped it a little bit and then slipped down a good three centimeters or something and still caught myself then on the edge. So this is essentially the problem with um, horizon hitting or I don't know what I should call it. If you're watching hand holds from below, all you can see is a horizon, right? A white uh, edge there and maybe a tick mark or something, but you don't really know where uh, the positive edge of the hold starts because you never had it in your hand before, right? This is an on-site. So what you're gonna do then, or what you should do rather, is to go almost as high as possible, right? Because there's a good chance that the hand hold that you're aiming for is actually further behind than you think and if that is the case then you're gonna reach it anyway right if it's uh, behind though and you're only shooting for the horizon that you see there's a really really high chance that you're gonna be too short and simply slip off and uh, you know you have wasted the onside essentially so here unfortunately because i overshot a little bit I slipped down a bit afterwards, three centimeters, and then did not hit this edge perfectly. And the re what's happening next is that I'm, I'm deciding, okay, I cannot lock off this edge uh, that way because I have it so badly. And I also can't re-grip it because the footholds that I'm having now, as you have seen, I lost my feet there. I can't really grab any footholds to, to re-grip this hold, right? So the only option that I really have here is to slap further. Use this hold that I just hit here with my right hand, which is not, a, which is not basically as planned as an intermediate, uh, and slap further. So let's see how that works out. Stepping higher here with the right foot. Going, simply going for it. Now this was a super hard move and I realized at this point, okay, that's probably not the beta, the right beta or the, the intended beta for this line because that's that felt very, very hard. Uh, next goal would be to reach this upper white spot there. Now I'm looking to the left down here because I realized if I would have a super good, super high foothold for my left foot, I could maybe lock off this thing that I just catched with my right hand and reach over to this uh, white spot up there. But unfortunately there is nothing for my left foot and that's why I'm deciding, okay, it's probably better to just let go. And another thing I've realized at this point is that due to me over gripping this target hold on the right, I ripped open my right index finger because the um, the target hold was actually a bit sharp and I just so unluckily hit something with my right index finger that ripped open my skin there. Now here I'm slowly getting a an, an idea of how this move should be performed actually. As you can see there is an opportunity for a really nice and solid back step or drop knee with the right foot. And therefore, this move becomes static, right? So you can actually statically grab this right hand hold and you can sort it in perfectly. You can simply lock it off and grab this pinch too far up there with left, uh, huge step to the side with left and then simply grabbing onto the big chalk spot up there below this big tufa and that is essentially the crux. So what did I do? make wrong in the onside well essentially i did not look um accurately enough or vigorously enough i should say onto my footholds had i found this uh, drop knee there there's a good chance i could actually have just statically done the move and sorted in the right hand hold perfectly and then would be able to find this pinch um, because you know 
If you're having the right hand hold badly, the pinch with left is not even an option because you cannot jump to this pinch because it's very delicate and you have to sort it in very well. But if you have the right hand hold statically and very well, well, then you can simply grab the pinch with left and do the next move easily, right? So up there, what we have is a super, super big tufa. Um, it's essentially over up there if you know what you're doing, which is uh, not what I'm doing here. I'm climbing to the left of the tufa because there were a lot of white spots, but in fact, you can just simply climb all the route of the right, on the right of the tufa with a couple of knee bars even. Um, as you can see here, I'm just going for the top here as quickly as possible, just to check of if there is another crux or not. Turns out that the crux is down there in the second third of the route where I just fell. And here I'm realizing, okay, I can actually climb all of this way uh, simply on the tufa and um, yeah, skip these, these strange side spots on the left side. Now one more time, checking out the crux, of course, because we want to be sure that we have everything down right uh, for the second go. As I've said, it's crucial to um, prepare properly for your second go because you can still save so much time if you just stick it off second go. Beautiful drop knee here with the right leg, sorting in this, um, this right hand hold statically. It's still not an easy move, but um, you know, it's static and this allows you to hit it properly and therefore you're gonna have a lot better chances. All right, so we just tried this Popo 8A on site, which went kind of suboptimal, unfortunately. Uh, fail really unnecessarily at the crux, which is not even that hard, but yeah, I overgripped this when I went in line dynamically for that crimp. I overgripped it and slipped off and slipped down <laughs> one step again and by doing this, I ripped my my index finger open. Let's see if I can, if I can focus that. So yeah, these are the unfortunate incidents. They really unfortunately happen a lot with onsetting because yeah, if you're onsetting at your limit, you just have to go dynamically sometimes to certain holds, and if you don't hit them properly, or let's say the hold is not, it's just a little bit far to more to the back or a bit more to the front and then you're sliding into it and unfortunately these splits and flappers they quite often occur which is uh, this is kind of an all or nothing situation all of the times with these onsites because either you get the onsite or you get nothing and an injury or something like that right so yeah can happen like this but it was unnecessary because had I stepped the right foothold, I think, and had I found the right intermediate crimp, I could have made the move statically, which is probably necessary anyway because the next move is from that hold, which I didn't know. I thought that you have to go one step higher actually, and this hold that I slept to was only the intermediate, which was wrong. Uh, yeah, so let's slap some tape onto this thing and do a quick second go. Starting at the bottom, uh, first third of the route again. This is a rather banter here The goal here is just to simply climb these sequences with losing as little energy as possible at this point I'm also a bit frustrated uh, because I really had a lot of hopes in this on site for three reasons First of all, I had a really good day that day I felt really light and I had a couple of warm-up routes before this on site and I already felt wow I'm getting into the flow quite nicely, so this could, um, you know, this could happen here, so to say. The second reason was that the draws were on this one. And having draws already on uh, when it comes to on sighting is really, really helpful and makes a huge difference because you have to lock off so much less stuff um, as you're not having to, having to clip the draws into the bolts, right? just have to take the rope and clip it into the draws. So draw surfing, uh, which is when um, you're essentially using draws which are already on the route, either because they are fixed or because someone else is trying the route as well. Draw surfing makes a significant difference and makes everything a lot easier. Um, the third reason why I was kind of bummed that this on-site didn't work out is that the route was actually pretty readable. I already had the um, the crux sequence. Um, I could basically read it from the ground almost, right? The um, 
the holes at the, at the crux are so scarce, uh, such few white spots that there, the sequence up there is kind of um, significant, right? And readable even from the ground because it's not so high up, it's right in the middle of the root. And um, yeah, I had that one down not so badly actually in my head and even when I executed it, I tried to execute it at least, uh, I wasn't that wrong. It's just that I hit this one hold um, the wrong way, so to say. So anyway, this is sometimes how it goes. We have to make the best of it and try to make the second go, get the second go done, right? So here we are again at this uh, last reset spot before the crux actually starts. These two really good underclings. Um, yeah, looking up again, trying to remember everything. As you can see, we didn't lose as much time as before in those reset spots at the, in the first third of the route. Because it's not necessary, right? Um, there's really no reason to waste time down there. You can just simply generate some flow by climbing fast through that stuff and approaching the uh, crux with a lot of confidence and power. Here we ga again have the left Gaston undercling thing with the left hand. Here is the right undercling with the right hand. Getting my feet up. There we go and sorting in the left side pull with left. Now I'm instantly looking for this drop knee foothold there. Left foot high up, drop knee foothold right there, just squeezing in it really tightly so that I don't slip off, sorting in the right hand hold perfectly. Now releasing right, uh, releasing left foot, hitting the other foothold with my right foot. Honestly, these were pretty much again on site because I haven't practiced this, uh, this crux before so much. Really big left high foothold. This one I remembered from my checkout go, which was actually quite crucial. Here again, flexibility, quite useful. Releasing again, hopping up onto the intermediate hold, which I did not even need this time. And yeah, now we're essentially hanging below this big tufa. Uh, the route is essentially over here. It, from here to the top I would say it's at max 6C, maybe 7A or something like that. So now we're clipping this quick draw here and if you would have a knee pad on you could do, I don't know, like three different kinds of knee bars probably on this tufa, on the right side of the tufa. But um, yeah, didn't bother to take my knee pad with me here. Uh, which is simply using the reset spot to shake off the hands a couple of times and then I'm going for the finish quite um, relatively solidly I would say. This is Popo 8A of La Maison de Chèvre in Leonidio in Greece. I hope you enjoyed the detailed analysis. Um, yeah, hope you can get something for your on-siting strategy here from this. As I said with the on-sites, you know, especially if it's at your limit, there's a bit of luck involved all the time. You have to go dynamically the one or the other time if you don't read everything perfectly and, and or are not super strong. That's just how it is. Um, I hope to see you soon in the next one, guys. Keep crushing, stay strong, bye.